Good morning, everybody. This is Cassie Stumo. I am the marketing specialist here at EAC. We will start off today with an intro of EAC and then PTC's application engineer and technical specialist or technical account specialist. Uh, Cody Wilchout will be presenting to us on how you can create visually appealing 2D and 3D illustrations for your technical documentation um, with Creo Illustrate. Everyone gets a recording of the session pending any technical difficulties. Um, please feel free to ask questions along the way and we'll answer them after the presentation. And um, we'll also have a short survey that will appear once the webinar is over. So please take a minute to answer those. So first off, I'll tell you a little bit about who we are. At EAC, our mission is to transform the way companies design, manufacture, connect to, and service their products. Uh, we're not only a value-added reseller for PTC, but we are the number one solutions provider for PTC in the country, uh, with experts in 22 areas of product development, um, and we're located all over the US with our headquarters um, in Minneapolis. Uh, we offer our customers everything they need for product development from CAD and simulation software for the full product design process uh, with Creo and Ansys, uh, software for managing service documentation such as Arbor Text, Vuforia Studio, and Creo Illustrate, and software for managing product data management um, such as Windchill, ThingWorks Navigate, and our EAC productivity apps. Uh, we assist with design and engineering projects uh, like FEA, simulation, reverse engineering, um, and then we also do pro or proof of concepts for our customers. Um, we offer webinars and PTC certified training courses for continuous learning. We also implement the industrial internet of things and AR uh, into business strategies to jumpstart initiatives around digital transformation and connecting all things in your company. Um, we're also a commercial reseller for Form Labs, offering their latest products in 3D printing. The Form 3 is now available with packages starting as low as $34.99. Um, so really, EAC is just the company you need to partner with uh, to get all of the technology you need at the forefront um, to make your team successful so you can continue to do the things that you do best. Um, I'll go ahead and hand things over to Cody so he can get started. Thank you very much. So nice to be with you all, with you here all today. I'm going to be going over a high-level overview of Creo Illustrate and how you can use some of your CAD data uh, to create illustrations and save yourself some time and energy. So starting off on why PTC has really put effort into this field and into a solution around this. Uh, technically, it can be difficult for companies to get technical illustrations, but they're generally vital to communication around products, services, and part information. In the current uh, way things are done though, often manual illustrations are used and those are slow and rarely up to date. Uh, you know, if it's a manual illustration, the odds when something gets changed that it's being updated uh, immediately aren't necessarily that high. And realistically as well, you should be using your 3D CAD content. You've already spent all this time and energy uh, making this CAD model. You should be able to reuse that information downstream. Also, illustrators often don't know CAD though. So if you do have CAD, uh, it can be hard for them to use that sometimes. And then you end up with engineers who are creating your technical publications and content and that's taking away time where they could be doing design work or something else that's more value add. Uh, this is also usually done in a serial process, so it doesn't really start until the design is done, which means that they're always behind and kind of slowing down that release process. Uh, now, as we mentioned earlier, when design changes do occur, if it's a manual updating process, you do have to go through and do rework and make those changes yourself or in some cases they just might not end up getting done and then the customer or your service technician or whoever it would be has out of date information. Uh, so the solution we've created to address all of this comes with Creo Illustrate, which does allow you to reuse that CAD data while still making it simple for non-CAD authors and then allows you to also keep things up to date 
push updates whenever you make changes to that CAD data and make sure that everyone has the latest information. So the capabilities that it gives you to help with that, number one, it starts by allowing you to make illustrations directly from that 3D CAD data. So bring the 3D CAD data in and then start making your illustrations. Uh, but it is designed for non-CAD users. So you do not have to be an expert in CAD usage to be able to use this tool. And it's CAD heterogeneous. So it obviously works very well with Creo files, but it can also work with neutral files and other things as well. Uh, so it does not have to be a, a Creo object. Uh, it also gives you the capability to do rich 3D technical illustrations. So you can do bomb callouts, you can do uh, annotations and things and do what you need to to really get that information across. Uh, now, as I was just talking about bomb callouts, the bill of materials is imported with the graphics. So it does have the full structure kind of from the CAD. Uh, obviously, it's not going to show you the features because uh, they're not really as important for this, but it is going to show you all the parts so that you can uh, look at that and assign things appropriately, like callouts. And it can do that intelligently, saving you some time and effort. And we'll see that as we uh, kind of move into the demonstration later. It also has an extendable library for symbols and graphics. So if there's anything that you might not have modeled in CAD, but you still want to show maybe like an arrow or a hand, you can do that. And they will be able to then, uh, you know, whoever would be consuming that, be able to see that and utilize that information. It also has an extensive uh, list of different types of renderings that you can do. So a lot of different options there on how you want that to be rendered and viewed. And you can also create animations in a few different ways inside of this tool and then have people be able to consume those animations to make it as clear as possible for them how they should be doing something. And now this does also integrate fully with PTC systems. So, you know, again, kind of mentioning it does not have to be Creo, but Creo obviously does work well with Creo Illustrate. And from there, it also works very well with Windchill. So it can manage all of the illustration content and give it uh, version, revision control, change management, all the same types of control that you have on uh, CAD data as well. And it can publish out in multiple formats. Uh, so you can choose 3D or 2D vectors or 2D rasters and go from there with how you want that to be viewed by others. So I'll go ahead and uh, jump over here so we can take a look at that. So we're gonna start here in Creo Illustrate. And I'm just gonna say, I wanna go ahead and import a model and I'm gonna link it so that if there is an update to that model, we can push that update downstream. So we're starting with this PVZ file, which for anyone, if they are unaware, is what's known as a product view zip file. This is a lightweight viewable version of a Creo file. So we can bring that in here directly. Uh, and open it up. And we're gonna be working with this tractor pusher here uh, for today. Now we can bring in multiple models as well. So if we have some sub assemblies or things that we wanna bring in, we can. And in this case, we're gonna bring in an arm, but you can see it's actually a Creo part this time. So we started with a PVZ file. This time we're gonna start with the actual uh, .asm file. And then we're just gonna translate that into the model exactly where we want it and it's going to stay there. So, you know, pretty quickly we've brought in two kind of assemblies here and we've got one more thing that we want to bring in. And in this case, it's not even a Creo file. So again, we're still just going to say we want a link and we're going to say we want a step file and it's going to bring in that hydraulic line for us. So now that we have everything inside of here that we want, we can start doing some of our work. And the first thing we're going to do is create a new figure. So figures are essentially um, illustrations almost. So for every uh, figure, you can have you know, some illustrations around that. And so you can think of those like that. So we're gonna name this one being the top level assembly. So an illustration around our top level assembly, uh, maybe change the lighting, how we want that to be displayed, uh, change the rendering. Maybe we wanna do flat shaded with edges, or if we wanna do uh, just shaded, or if we want uh, white or HLR, you know, pick between any of those, pick between orthographic or perspective viewing, and then go from there. Uh, now, we have a few other illustrations that we've already created and some figures we've already created here. And the first is uh, this sequence around this bucket here uh, for the arm. So we want to disassemble the bucket and take it off. And so you can see we've broken that down in a step-by-step -step sequence. 
but this actually also plays as an animation. So we can record content directly inside of Creo Illustrate here, and we can do different things, like if I want to draw someone's attention, make that bucket flash before I move it, then simply transform it and start moving it around inside of our space to wherever you need it to go. And of course, you can add any other effects or things that you might need, as well as capture an image of it for that end sequence. Any notes as well. And you can be very specific editing kind of down to the exact time, how things are happening, how long does the overall sequence take, how long does each part of that sequence take. And then of course we can preview this and see how this looks. So going through here is an example. We have starting off flashing for these uh, little nuts uh, that are coming out or these little connectors that are coming out and then bringing in a hammer from that symbol library to show that we want to knock these pegs through uh, before we remove that bucket. And of course we're getting the text in the upper left hand corner as well telling you what's going on for each of those steps. But this is a great way to be able to visually illustrate for people how a process needs to be done. And you can do it using your CAD data very quickly and easily without a lot of rework. Now, of course, you can do more traditional type of views as well here with your illustrations. So if we wanted to do a, an explode view of some of these nuts and bolts on this uh, bucket, we can do that. We can do that with explode lines as well. And there's some intelligence here. So as you move those around, it knows kind of what's going on. We can also do more detailed views in insets, and those do not have to be rendered the same way as the overall uh, view is. So you can do different views and things like that from here. It also recognizes that as we move the model around here, where that inset is pointing at. So for example, here, if we look at this backside uh, bracket and we rotate back around, it knows still to show the other side, even though that's hidden. Uh, we can also do some of the callouts that I mentioned earlier. So I could just come to my item list in the uh, toolbar, then choose whether I want to do an assembly or the entire structure. In my case, we just want the bucket. So we're going to say bucket here and then give an item number callout. And we can see at the bottom here, it gives us an interactive table that highlights based off of which uh, callout we're selecting. It shows you the name. It shows you the quantity and the number of times that it's showing up and what the balloon it is that goes with it as well. Uh, so again, just some fast, easy reuse of your CAD data there to create these types of illustrations and then some intelligent callouts to be able to use some of that information quickly and easily. Uh, next, if we come back to kind of a top level figure here, we could start looking at what publishing we wanna do. So we could do a 3D, a 2D or an image. In our case, we're gonna start with a 3D publication that we want. So we'll say, I wanna publish this in 3D. And when we do publish in 3D, it is gonna publish off as that PVZ file. So that product view zip file, which is the lightweight viewable. And now if we open that view, uh, that PVZ file that we just created up in say Creo View, for example, we can see each of those different figures that we made uh, listed there. You can activate one and then you can toggle between them. So we can see starting with that uh, top level assembly, if we wanna come to the bucket here, we can see the bucket with those callouts. Uh, we can even see that disassembly with the animation and people who are viewing this from Creo View can view that animation directly here as well. So again, a great way to be able to quickly send information to someone in a way that is very easy for them to uh, understand and review. Now, coming back to Creo Illustrate here, we then want to maybe try publishing some 2D information instead of the 3D. So we'll say we just want a 2D illustration. We have some options there around uh, exactly how we want that to be published. And then we can say again, publish, and it's gonna give us more options uh, around what exactly we want. So we'll again say 2D, in this case, again, a PVZ file, and hop back over here to Creo View and start opening that up. Now you can see it's broken down the figures a little bit differently now. So we still have that same top level figure, uh, maybe the bucket assembly and uh, things like that. But we also now have those steps broken down into 2D images. So even though that's an illustration that goes through an animation, it still knows that it can take those uh, kind of end images at each of those steps and build those out into a process for you and show those. Uh, you can also be a little bit more specific. Uh, so if we wanted to do a specific figure here uh, rather than all of the figures, we can do that directly here as well. 
and we can make uh, some uh, you know quick use out of the information in here. So I'll start by just copying the information from our item list at the bottom that has again the names, quantity, and the item number. And now when I do uh, a save as figure here for this bucket bomb, I can paste this uh, table in. So in my case, I'll say I want to make a PDF figure of this and save it. It's gonna give me the options for what type of PDF I wanna build out. Uh, once I save that, then I've now, you know, again, quickly gone from CAD data to, um, you know, maybe an explode view of that in Creo Illustrate, some smart markups, and that, uh, you know, now table there for the bomb information as well. So very quick illustration generation, very easy. Uh, now, continuing on from that same idea, even down to a step in this animation process, we can create an individual image here uh, for one of these. And so I could say I want to save as, in this case, I want to do an image file and pick what type of image file it is that I want and go ahead and save that. And of course, it'll give you some of the same type of options uh, around resolution and things like that for the image. Uh, now that I've saved that image, I could come to my technical content here, the technical documentation. We can see I've got a few different illustrations in here, some images from that breakdown on the bucket. So I just want to bring in that uh, last image here. So I'll just say I want to link in the um, image again from that so that if there are changes, I can push those downstream to Illustrate and then push those uh, changes again down further here. And at the end of the day, now I could do something like check this into Windchill, uh, check those illustration files into Windchill, and you know manage that content right along that CAD data and have it be associative to it as well, uh, so that as changes are made, there's a workflow around pushing that downstream. Uh, but really what we've seen here is that we can start from that CAD data to get either 3D or 2D illustrations, and you can do you know high-level illustrations, more detailed uh, explode view illustrations, uh, with callouts and bill materials information, or even breakdowns and processes from a 2D or 3D with animation style uh, side. And then once you have those outputs, start using them in your different technical documentations uh, to help illustrate whatever's going on uh, with those. And so just to kind of close off a little bit of what we saw there, uh, you know, some value that this really gives you is number one, it's linking to that 3D source. So as I kind of mentioned, a, a lot of the value there is around that process of being able to push those updates. So if you update your CAD, you push that down to Creo Illustrate and those illustrations are gonna automatically update for that new CAD data as well, and then push that down to your illustration files. Uh, you can also author independently of your engineers. You don't need engineers who know how to use Creo or SolidWorks or whatever it would be to be able to do this. You saw it's a pretty simple user interface and you don't have to actually do any modeling work there inside of that. And then at the end of the day, that, that saves you uh, duplicate work. You're not going through and redrawing these illustrations. You're not going through and manually doing that. You've already got the uh, a, an illustration, we'll say, of that data in the form of the CAD. So just reuse that and save yourself work. And then as well, maximize your illustration usage. Uh, you know, your illustration is gonna be up to date. They're gonna be better because they do use that CAD data to make sure that it's accurate. So really maximize your illustrations and make that a selling point for you know, your products. Uh, and at the end of the day, this is gonna help you get to market faster because you're not waiting on that serial process to end. Because you can push updates down, you can start doing your illustrations earlier. And even if there is a change, it doesn't matter. It's not like you have to go back through and do all that work from scratch. You just push it downstream and get that update. Uh, and then that means you can improve your customer satisfaction because they're getting better outputs that they can view and work with your products with. Uh, so with that, uh, I'll go ahead and pass it back off to you, Daisy. Thanks so much, Cody, for that presentation. I'll be sending the recording of this session in a follow-up email this afternoon um, in case you'd like to rewatch anything or send the replay to your coworkers.